in the making of this video, it really surprised me how much people favor negative search results, especially when it comes to Reddit. Like, check this out. Share your crappy Christmas stories, r slash ask Reddit. Reddit, what's your worst Christmas ever? Tell me your funniest, heartwarming, or worst holiday story. Gee, I wonder which one you want to hear. But in all seriousness, I probably read through at least eight dozen stories, finally finding some good positive ones. And so if you like what you see, please be sure to leave a like down below. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And without further ado, here are three of the most heartwarming Christmas stories I could find. This first story went viral about eight years ago, so many of you may already know what I'm about to say, but I just had to include this because I found it so unbelievable. A few weeks before Christmas, WestJet decided to do a promotion video for their airline called Christmas Miracle. So a few weeks before Christmas, some WestJet employees set up this giant gift box in the departure lounge, and on the side of this box was a built-in screen displaying a digital Santa. And after the passengers scanned their boarding passes, Santa asked them what they wanted for Christmas. And at first, some people may have thought that Santa was an AI, but it quickly became obvious that he was real, asking very personal questions and making comments that were specific to certain people. Little did these people know that behind the scenes, WestJet employees were taking notes on everything their guests have requested, running out to buy all the gifts as soon as the two flights were in the air. And the staff had around two and a half hours to drive out to the stores, buy every gift that was requested, and then transport all the gifts back to headquarters to be wrapped and labeled. And the reason I find this so incredible is because some businesses can't even remember your name after being with them for like 10 plus years, yet WestJet employees had the competency to accurately record what everyone wanted, under pressure by the way, and then make sure each of those gifts got to the right person. But the funniest part in all this is that the WestJet's vice president of communications told journalists that he only expected maybe like 800,000 views on YouTube for this video, but were astounded to see the video break 13 million views in less than a week. Absolutely amazing. In 2013, a Michigan man named Chad Rose just happened to have an extra Christmas tree that year left over from a parade that his business participated in a few days earlier. And doing what any good Samaritan would do, he posted the tree on Craigslist looking to give it away for free. And after posting the ad, his inbox was immediately flooded with messages of touching stories detailing why they should be the ones who have the tree. And as he read through all these messages, it quickly became obvious just how much a Christmas tree would mean to some people. And one email really stuck out to him. It read, Having a real Christmas tree would be such a great blessing this year because we usually draw a Christmas tree on a large poster and hang it in the corner. And when reading this, Chad realized that for a lot of families, $25 for a Christmas tree was just way out of their financial reach. And many children would never experience what it would be like to have a real Christmas tree. And he wrestled with the fact that he would only have the ability to change that for one family. But then he got an idea. He went out and bought 40 more trees, giving one to each of the families that wrote to him. And around the same time, a woman by the name of Anne Passant responded to his ad and not to get, but to give. She offered to donate ornaments and trimming to decorate each of the 40 trees Chad had picked up. 
And here is a photo of Chad loading up his trailer with the 41 trees before delivering them later that day. It's Christmas Eve 1914 and Bruce Barron's father, a British gunner, shivers in the cold muddy trenches of the Western Front. And when the war started six months before, many had joined the fight thinking that they would be home for the holidays, but little did they know the conflict would drag on for four more years, becoming one of the bloodiest wars in history. But for one day out of the year, something extraordinary happened. And as day turned into night, the shooting started to slow, and by 10 p.m., there was only silence. And Bruce listens intently and hears voices coming from the German trenches and turns to a fellow soldier asking if he heard it too. The soldier replied that he did, and as it turns out, the noise that they were both hearing was German soldiers singing Christmas carols, a well-known tradition on Christmas Eve. And the next morning, British soldiers heard shouts coming from the German trenches, inviting them over to their side. And after a short while of yelling back and forth, an agreement was made to meet in the middle of no man's land. Troops from both sides nervously climbed out of their trenches, walking to no man's land, totally unarmed, with everyone wondering the same thing. What happens next? And what does end up happening stunned the world. The British and Germans shook hands and spoke without an ounce of hate between them, even though just hours earlier they were actively trying to kill each other. They shared songs and wine and tobacco, and Bruce, even having observed all of this firsthand, still couldn't believe his eyes. And later in life, he would become a prominent cartoonist, including this illustration in his memoirs of what it was like on that sunny Christmas morning. Other diaries describe makeshift barbershops where each side would give the other haircuts and in some cases even helped each other collect their dead. Somehow the soldiers managed to find a ball and played a soccer match that even included some higher ranking officers. This was truly a unique and heartwarming moment because for every man on that battlefield that day was the first time in six months that they had heard something other than the constant firing of guns and sounds of war. Some even described it as being so quiet it sounded like a dream. And when the day was finally over and the festivities slowly came to an end, the soldiers each returned to their trenches wishing the other good luck because they knew that this blissful peace was only temporary. In present day, we have this memorial that stands in England commemorating this legendary Christmas truce. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you want more things Christmas, check out this video where I talk about the five weirdest and most embarrassing Christmas gift stories the internet has to offer. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.